with any discussion about the lymphatic system. You always have to look at immunity. Look at how immunity is defined. The ability to resist damage from foreign substances such as microorganisms and harmful chemicals. What that means is the ability to resist and remove and destroy anything coming into the body which might harm you. Now look at the two big categories of immunity. You got this innate and this adaptive. Notice how the innate is also called nonspecific resistance. The reason being anything under this innate category doesn't improve throughout your life. It always reacts in exactly the same way. So that's why it's nonspecific. It doesn't respond in a different way to a different type of foreign substance. We'll see that with the adaptive. But look at the innate or nonspecific. Think about mechanical mechanisms right here. Think about your skin, how much that keeps things out. It keeps a lot of stuff in, but everybody knows it keeps a lot of harmful things out of you. Chemicals, which could be toxic, bacteria, and whatever else that may be. Think about how tears are always washing the surface of your eyes, keeping those clean. Every time you blink, it's about like windshield wipers working. Saliva is always washing out your oral cavity. If you didn't have this constant washing of bacteria out of your oral cavity, you wouldn't have teeth or gums for very long. Mucous membranes lining these passageways which open to the outside of the body. Those are epithelial cell layers with the mucus produced by goblet cells. Big, thick layer of protection there. Urine movement. Every time we move urine through the urinary system, it can flush bacteria and other things out of the urinary tract. Cilia in the bronchi, which are your air passageways. As you breathe in air and material sticks to that mucus, the cilia move it up. It'll move it up or out of your lungs and out of these bronchi. You'll bring it to the top of your trachea. You'll swallow it. It goes down to your stomach. And stomach acids will kill just about anything. But in addition to all these mechanical mechanisms, you also got chemical mediators. We'll look at those on another picture coming up here in just a second. But if you look at what these chemicals do, largely they promote phagocytosis, right? They'll attract white blood cells and tell them to eat up whatever this material is that's causing the release of those chemicals. It also causes inflammation by dilating blood vessels, in other words, opening them up and making them more permeable, letting material move out of the blood and into a, into a tissue where damage may be. But then you also have these cells of innate immunity. And what you're looking at here are all of your white blood cells except lymphocytes. Only the lymphocytes have this specificity in memory you see down here at the bottom under adaptive. The other white blood cells don't. Got a lot of good phagocytic cells and produce some of these chemicals we're going to look at here in a second. But everything we've looked at so far is innate. Does not get better over time. But adaptive immunity does. Notice how it's also called the specific because here the body can respond different to each different type of foreign substance coming in. So this does get better over time. This is why you don't keep getting the same diseases over and over in your life. So the lymphocytes have this specificity in memory. They can remember specific foreign invaders. They know how to recognize each different substance and they can remember how to destroy it after they've done it once. And that second response, the second time, say the same foreign invader comes along, is much faster. And that's why we don't keep getting the same diseases over and over throughout our life. But look back at these chemicals of innate immunity we were talking about on that previous picture. A lot of them are surface chemicals, like lysosomes found in tears and saliva. Think about the acid in the stomach. That'll kill practically any type of foreign invader getting into your stomach there. The mucus in the body systems is a thick protective layer over those. Histamine you've heard about before. They'll tell you it comes from mast cells. That's just a basophil that left the blood and entered the tissues. But look at what it does. Acts as a vasodilator, opens up blood vessels, brings more blood into an area, and it makes them more permeable. More material can leave the blood and enter the tissues. And that's what you want when a tissue is damaged. This can also contract the smooth muscle in the bronchi, which are your air passageways. You may have heard about that happening when somebody has an asthma attack. Kinins here, coming from plasma proteins, also act as vasodilators and increase permeability of the blood vessel wall. They can also stimulate pain receptors. Prostaglandins, again, we see vasodilator and increasing vascular permeability. They can stimulate pain receptors. And then leukotrienes. 
Look again, vasodilators, vascular permeability, and these can also contract the smooth muscle in the bronchi. So you see a lot of these chemicals working in the same way, bringing more blood into an area and letting more things in that blood move out into the tissue. That's what causes that swelling when a tissue gets damaged. We also have complements increasing vascular permeability, and they can lyse cells by forming a hole in their cell wall. If you do that, one of these membrane attack complexes, osmosis will take care of the rest. Water will move into a cell and it'll pop, it'll rupture, it'll lyse. But these also promote phagocytosis. Interferons interfere with the spreading of viruses. Once a cell gets infected with a virus, there's nothing that can be done to remove that virus. But the neighboring cells can be told how to protect themselves and keep the virus from spreading. That's where the interferons come in. Then we also have these pyrogens, which work at the hypothalamus and raise your body temperature. So these are the chemicals responsible for fever. And with fever, it's thought that the reason our body temperature goes up and we have an infection is to speed up chemical reactions in the body. Thought that it would speed up the immune system, probably something to that right there. And it's also thought that it makes a hostile environment for these pathogens. They like to live best at 98.6, which is normal body temp for most people. So when this raises your body temperature, it's more difficult for them to live and grow. But think about if this heats you up, why do you feel cold? Well, a couple of different reasons. If you've raised your internal body temperature, the temperature outside of you is going to feel cooler. So that's one reason. And often when we run a fever, we might sweat. And of course, when water evaporates off the skin, it cools that skin even more, making the outside feel even cooler than what it did before. So that's why we feel cold. Here's a picture of a lymph node. We'll look at that if we haven't already. Here's the lymphatic system, some of the major structures, and again, the links to the anatomy study guide.